Welcome to Shuey's Barbecue, where you'll learn the tips and tricks to master your grill. Today, I'm going to be showing you some Weber temp control techniques that I like to use. Now, if you do like this video, don't forget, give me the thumbs up, share it with your mates. But the best thing you can do for yourself is hit that subscribe and that bell button. And that way, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So, let's get into it. So, you are struggling to control the temps in your Weber. I can't recommend enough that you go out and get yourself a good quality probe thermometer to track your Weber's internal temp. And they usually come with extra probes to track the internal temps of your meat you are cooking as well. No matter the size of the barbecue, the principle is always the same. Fuel plus oxygen creates heat. So let's get stuck into how to control this. We obviously need some type of fuel to create heat in a barbecue. Now whether that be charcoal in its pure lump form or a briquette, it doesn't matter, the same principle is applied. Now whether we're using the tried and tested snake method or the similar minion method, even the two basket set up for roasting or the dual zone cooking method for reverse searing a steak. It all starts with how much lit fuel you start with your cook. For example, if I want to smoke using the snake method, starting with 12 lit briquettes of fuel, I'll happily achieve temps between 107 degrees and 135 degrees Celsius with no real problem. If I wish to be smoking hot and fast, add 15 lit briquettes and I'll easily hit temps around 135 to 160 degrees Celsius all day long. So, you started with the correct amount of fuel and yet your Weber isn't at the same temp as that guy on YouTube's video that you watched. What went wrong? Nothing went wrong. Different fuel, the age of the fuel, do you live in a dry or a humid environment? Does his bowl and lid have a better seal than yours does? These all factor in to how fuel reacts differently in your Webers to the next guys. So how can we fix this? By adjusting the oxygen levels coming into the Weber using the bowl vent. Yep. Not only does this clean the ash out, it helps control the heat, or more to the point, the amount of oxygen coming in. Wide open is hotter, so obviously closing it down is cooler. By starving the lit fuel of oxygen, you are choking the combustion of the fuel inside the Weber. That's science. You're learning today. We can use water a few different ways when cooking in a Weber. When water is heated in a Weber, it creates a nice steamy environment. And this steam actually helps smoke stick to our meat better than in a dry environment. Water also heats and cools a lot slower than air does. So by adding water into a Weber, on a windy day, you're gonna help stop or at least minimize those heat fluctuations that you get. So, it also helps regulate temps in our Weber. That's right, it helps regulate the temps. By adding hot water at the start of a cook, you are creating a nice steamy environment for the food without affecting the heat too much. But if you add cold water, it reduces the heat inside the Weber as the cold water absorbs the energy and the heat from your lit fuel. This will happen for as long as the water stays cool, but as it warms up, so does the temp inside the Weber. So, if you are struggling to bring down the temp in your Weber, to cool down the inside temps quickly, add a lot of cold liquid into a pan. Just like if you were on a hot summer's day, 
Adding cool liquid cools you down as well. Smoking wood is a great way to add an extra flavour profile to our meat. But how does wood affect our temps? Well, it's wood. It's going to combust or smoulder when put on that lit charcoal. So it is actually going to affect the temperature. It also burns quicker than lump charcoal or briquettes. So when using a few chunks of it, space them out so they are not touching. As each piece ignites, it will create a small heat spike or surge. But if they are all together, it will obviously create a big heat spike and it will ignite more fuel. If you didn't know, the Weber lid vent creates a hot spot as cold oxygen is sucked through those bottom bowl vents, through the hot fuel, around our food, and then back out that lid vent. So to ensure an even cook, I recommend turning the lid a third of the way through small cooks, and for larger cooks, just keep that lid vent on the opposite side of the lit fuel. No matter the length of the cook, it's always good to make sure you're fueled up for the cook just like your Weber is. I recommend beer. Beer is 90% water and we all know that water is good for you. So drink more beer. And for those of you who like to use my beer timer, today's video, easily a two beerer. Okay, you have set up a thermometer. You started with the correct amount of fuel. You've got a water pan in, you've got wood chunks, you've set your vents, your Weber is at the temp that you want to start cooking at. What now? Make sure it is stable. Yep, give it 20 to 30 minutes and make sure the temp isn't still rising or dropping. Every time you make an adjustment, it takes time for the Weber to react. Small fluctuations are going to happen, but if you don't settle the temp at the start, you'll get large fluctuations and you will be constantly adjusting your vent and water levels for the most part of the cook. The way to controlling heat in your Weber is one, by starting with the correct amount of lit fuel to reach the desired temp you want to cook at. Two, controlling the amount of oxygen entering the bowl of your Weber. Three, stabilizing that heat with water. Do these three things and you'll be mastering your cooks moving forward. Thanks for watching. If you like free stuff, check out my Instagram for giveaways and more content. Cheers.